Hello friends, this video on data handling part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Data, Arithmetic Mean, Range of Data, Mode, Median, Bar Graph Interpretation, Double Bar Graph and Probability. Data What exactly is data? Let us look at some very common examples from our day-to-day -day life. Let's think of uh, a situation when your class teacher is taking the attendance of your class. Now, why does the class teacher needs to take attendance? Just to make sure that how many students are present, how many students are not present, and some of the students might be trying to be more absent in the class they are not present most of the time so just to analyze all these things the, the is the entire purpose of having an attendance right okay now in a class approximately how many students are there in your school so in each class you have some 40 50 60 or even more number of students now let's say that the attendance of class 7th for the month of September is somewhat like this 15, 14, 17, 19, 10, 6, 17, 15. Now what is this? This represents the number of students present on each day of September. Now in the month of September you have a total of 30 days. Let's assume that you have 20 to 25 working days and the attendance of those 20 to 25 working days is given as you can see on the screen. Now looking at this data, if the teacher is being asked that can you tell me uh, on which day in September the attendance was maximum, that means on which particular day of September maximum number of students were present in the class. Do you think looking at this data the teacher can tell that very quickly? Not really because when you look at this data, the data is like all similar numbers they have been written with commas so uh, there is a lot of chance that even though you very minutely look at the data you might miss out a number or two so it is quite difficult to analyze the data looking at this huge set of data so if, a if the teacher is being asked that how would you know which student is bunking the class most often so that, that is again a difficult question for the teacher because this data just tells him that how many students were present on a particular day of September. So these kind of questions like who all are present, which specific students are absent or which specific students are present that is very difficult to analyze from this given data. Who is the best attendee, which is that student who attends regularly. That means he, he is never absent. Every time he is present in the class. So that is also a difficult question to be answered looking at this data. So these are some of the questions which cannot be easily answered looking at this data. Let's look at another example. Let's say that there is a cricket match going on and uh, the score of the cricket match that, that is the runs scored in the cricket match by all the 11 players are given as follows 50, 100, 80, 10, 15, 6, 15 and so on. Now again when you look at the data even though this is a smaller data when compared to the previous example so here you just have 11 numbers but if I ask you that which particular player scored the maximum runs in that case you actually need to compare all the 11 numbers and need to find out which is the biggest number and only then you can say yeah, okay this player did this but even in that case let's say that even if we see that 120 is the biggest number but it is very difficult to say that who scored 120 because no such name is given right or who scored less so these kind of questions are difficult to be answered looking at this kind of data now what, what are you actually understanding about data with these examples? What exactly is data? Data is nothing but these numbers which are written on the screen. So in the first example, data was nothing but the attendance of the class on different days. In this example, data is nothing but the runs scored by the 11 players. So data is nothing but numbers. Well, it is not really like that, but let me give you some more examples. Let us now think of a shopkeeper. 
So this guy in blue shirt is the shopkeeper at uh, the kind of sale that he does from his shop. Uh, there is a data that how much was his sale for different items in a particular year. And it was something like this. So 46,000, 51,000, 1 lakh 30,000 and so on. So this was his sale. So this is the amount of sale that he did in that particular year for different items. Now, what are those items? Because in, in his shop, he might, it, if it is a stationary shop, he might have various items like it could be books, pencils, pens, sketch paints, scissors, glue. So it could be anything, right, in a stationary shop. But which is the sale for which particular item that is again not mentioned here. So again, you see looking at this data, it is very difficult for the shopkeeper to analyze anything because why do we even need this kind of data? Why are we even talking about these kind of numbers? That's because with the help of this data, the shopkeeper might be able to manage the inventory of his shop better for the next year. Let's say that in this particular year, uh, he bought say, 50,000 pencils but none of them were sold so he gets an idea that pencil is an item which is slow moving so people really do not buy a lot of pencils from his shop so for the next year he might plan in such a way that he doesn't keep a lot of pencils in his shop so this is how analysis of data helps the shopkeeper and that is why he wants to analyze the data but looking at a data of this kind it is very difficult to do a proper analysis so some of the questions like this might be helpful for the shopkeeper to plan for his next year. Like which items give better sales so that he can buy them more? Which month gives better sale so that he can have a good stock in his shop during that month? Which items are slow moving so that he can avoid buying them? So these are some of the things that's going to be helpful. But unfortunately with this kind of a data, it is very difficult to find answers to these questions. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.